<laughs> great. Wow, what a great crew. Good afternoon. Yeah. Oh, it's great. And it is a good afternoon um, because we're here to celebrate something really, really important. That is the uh, inauguration of a catalyst fund, a momentum fund that's going to help us do what we need to do in this state, which is to build more housing. Build more housing so that people can afford to stay here, grow families here, businesses can grow here. It's what we've got to do. So I want to thank everybody for being here to celebrate what we're building through the MBTA Communities Act, efforts to unlock new homes and make them more affordable for everyone. It's great to be in Somerville, of course. Yes. And that's Mayor Ballantyne, who's leading the claps. She's led with a pro-housing agenda, along with members of the city council and the state legislative delegation. I know that includes Senator Pat Jalen, Rep. Mike Conley, Rep. Christine Barber, Rep. Erica Eiderhoven, um, who are here. We're also joined by this incredible uh, group of mayors and city managers and town administrators from all over, which is really, really great to see so many people unified in support for what is such an important initiative for our state. We have Rep. Chicolo, Rep. Gentile, Senator Crichton. Um, we have city managers from Chelsea and Cambridge. Thank you um, for being here. Um, we have mayors, Mayor Joyce from Braintree, Mayor Keefe from Revere, Mayor Koch from Quincy, Mayor Ruth Ann Fuller from Newton, uh, Mayor Longo Cone from Medford. We have, I'm sure, others to be named later. I'm looking around. We'll make sure we, we catch you all. But it just is great to see so much, uh, so much solidarity. I'm honored to be uh, here alongside our great Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll, who was a mayor of an MBTA community for many, many years. Um, <laughs> Rep. Joe McGonigal, are you afraid? Yes, yeah, you're in Somerville, you don't want to step up? Okay. <laughs> and Margaret Hurley from the Attorney General's <laughs> Office, uh, who does great work with the municipalities. Um, Secretary Ed Augustus, our state's first ever Secretary of Housing and Livable Communities. All these incredible municipal leaders who are embracing the benefits of transit-oriented housing, and so many residents and advocates who've helped make this uh, possible, who are making the case for bringing down costs and improving the quality of life. And last but not least, our fantastic Attorney General, who's been a champion for the people of Massachusetts on so many fronts, including housing, Andrea Campbell. We're here at Prospect Union Square because it's a great, great mixed income development with, as you can see, unbeatable access to the Green Line. It's one example of what's possible when you build multifamily housing near transit. And that's what the MBTA Communities Act is for. That's what it helps us do. Now, this housing, it's going to look different in different communities. It's not one size fits all. And the point of this is to be able to work together to figure out what's best for individual communities and cities and towns. But what is good for every city and town is unlocking housing, more housing, because it's going to unlock so many opportunities for our state. We're going to have homes that are affordable across a range of incomes that are going to ease the cost of living and pressure on rents and prices. We're going to get housing that is designed to meet local community needs to help people stay here, grow families here, retire even in the towns that they love. You get convenient commuting on a transit system that is steadily improving under historic investments and skilled leadership. You reduce emissions and get cleaner air. Ultimately, you get the things that you need to improve the quality of life for your community. That's what this law is all about. And it's important that everyone understand the full story of what's behind this law and what's possible. Towns and cities across Eastern Massachusetts are in fact embracing this opportunity and these benefits. They wanna remove and they understand the importance of removing barriers that have existed for far too long. And that is, uh, I think, best reflected in the number of leaders who are standing in solidarity with us today. 
There are 36 communities that have already achieved compliance or conditional compliance. In total, 75, 75 communities have approved multifamily zoning. I'm, I'm reading this for the reporters taking it down, but Carissa can get you everything. But these numbers matter because a lot's been said, right? There's a lot of focus on particular communities, but let's focus on the big picture. 177 MBTA communities. Already, as I mentioned, nearly 40 are at full conditional compliance. In total, 75 have approved multifamily zoning. Number 75, we're Southboro, came in just last night, voted in a special town meeting. That's what momentum looks like. And, um, and it, it reflects a serious region-wide effort. So I want to thank all the municipal leaders um, and all the time that is spent in community meetings, in particular educating our neighbors, educating residents about how important this is. I want to thank our planners who are out there. Yeah. <laughs> Look, we need these homes. We want these homes for our young people, for our young families. Don't you want your kids to stay in Massachusetts, folks? Right? Yeah, yeah, Don't you yeah. want your aging parents to be able to age alongside their grandchildren or nearby? Yes. We need homes for first responders, for teachers, for our servers, for seniors, for veterans, and so much more. This is about how we build and maintain strong communities. So. Thank you to the cities and towns that have done the work. Our pledge to you is that we're an administration and a team that's going to work. We're Team Massachusetts, remember, uh, that's going to work on uh, getting this done together. And to that end, we've set aside $15 million to provide tech technical assistance uh, in the form of grants to support the work that these communities need to do. And with the MBTA Communities Catalyst Fund, we're going to help get more communities online. Lowering house, housing costs, cutting commuting times, that's a big thing, and making Massachusetts stronger. And uh, there's no greater champion who believes in the strength of our great state than our fantastic Lieutenant Governor, Kim Driscoll. Thank you, Governor. It's great to be here with so many uh, leaders in local government, um, Secretary Augustus, A.G. Campbell, the planners, the Chamber of Commerce, the small business owners, the folks who represent housing advocacy groups, the individuals who are building housing in our communities. We've got a collection of those folks all here today. And together, we're the ones who are facing down our state's biggest challenge. We have got momentum on our side, 74 to 2. That's the score right now. I don't want to call it a blowout because we like to play through the final whistle, but that's a pretty big lead. That means most communities are realizing what a benefit this is. It's a sign that our state's residents understand and support MBTA communities, and some of the recent polling frankly backs that. People know we have a housing shortage. They know that that's the main factor driving up the cost of housing, and they know, as the governor said, their children can't afford to settle in the town they grew up in, Older adults can't afford to stay in the community they want to stay in and downsize. There just aren't those options. That's why this year we passed the largest state investment in housing, a $5 billion housing bond bill, the Affordable Homes Act, with all of your support. That's the biggest housing investment in our state's history, and we need every dollar of it. And we're bringing these resources to cities and towns. We shape the policies, we shift the resources, but housing gets built in communities. That's why this new fund the governor just outlined is an exciting addition to the toolkit. The ways that we are going to support our communities, from technical assistance to advocacy to ensuring that you have dollars to build upon the zoning shifts and changes that you're making. This is a tremendous asset, and we think the MBTA is a tremendous asset. The ability to move a lot of people, to live in close proximity, it's one of the most highly utilized systems in the country, enabling millions of people to get to jobs and schools and appointments. And we know it has so much more potential. And this is just an example of it, this extension, and what it's led to in terms of the creation of housing and mixed-use housing and the type of housing that supports so many members of our community. This MBTA Communities Act is key to unlocking that potential in so many of our communities, making homes more possible and more affordable to workers and families. The folks who pour our coffee and our beer, who work in our health centers, who sweep our streets and keep our neighborhoods running, we need those individuals living in our communities too. It keeps our communities authentic. 
We just don't want to have communities that used to be affordable no longer, no longer to be able to support the individuals re you rely on to have a strong community. That's why when you look at this list of the cities and towns that have already adopted the MBTA Communities Act, you're going to see cities and towns of every shape and size, every demographic, from Chelsea and Cambridge to Wayland and Westford. And I know how much work goes into getting these, these programs adopted, getting the new zoning in place. Many of you are at those ZBA meetings or at those planning board meetings or attending a town meeting or a city council standing up and saying, I support this process of allowing neighbors to support more neighbors moving into community and helping support the housing we need. This shortage has been something of housing has been something that has been and took place over decades, right? We haven't built enough housing. Now we are leaning in, and I know all of the public servants here, my former colleagues, mayors and municipal leaders, the planners, the builders, other folks here, are focused not just on how we meet the law's requirements, but how we actually make, for res make it work for residents and communities. That's what these plans are about. Every community's project is going to look a little different. Every community's zoning is going to look a little bit different. But it's going to help us create the housing that we need statewide to ensure that we're going to be able to serve community members to build strong and livable communities. This MBTA Communities Catalyst Fund is going to help our cities and towns do that even further, accelerate the pace of getting housing from an idea and a plan to a full project. We're really excited about where we stand right now. We know the folks who don't approve housing, the communities who don't sometimes grab all the attention. Frankly, we are winning this, this fight for housing. People are standing up, putting their hands up, advocating, working hard, knocking on doors, making phone calls to say, no, we can build the housing that we need in Massachusetts to keep our community strong, to drive our economy, and to deliver for that better future that our younger generation is looking for. We've got a lot of momentum, and we're not going to stop here. And the person who's helping championing this for our, our office, for our team, couldn't be anyone better than a former city manager, a former senator, someone who knows what it takes to get housing built in communities. I'm proud to introduce our Secretary of Housing and Livable Communities, Ed Augustus. First, uh, thank you, Governor Healy, for your leadership and, and really for being all in on confronting our housing crisis. Uh, I also want to thank Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, who's been such a staunch advocate for smart housing solutions. Attorney General Campbell, thank you for your strong partnership and that of your office. And Mayor Ballantyne, you and the city of Somerville have really shown leadership in going above and beyond what was asked through this important law. Thank you. And to all our state and local leaders here, thank you for joining in today's celebration. But more importantly, thank you for providing the critical leadership as we confront the housing crisis. Today is an important milestone in an effort that began more than three years ago. Nearly three years after, signing the law, after it being signed into law, I'm happy to report that the MBTA Communities Law is working. This spring, we saw a wave of communities adding new multifamily zoning. And as the governor mentioned, 75 communities have now embraced that multifamily zoning. That's 75 communities saying yes to housing. <laughs> 75 communities saying yes to their young people who hope to have an apartment or purchase their first home. 75 communities saying yes to their teachers and DPW workers and firefighters who deserve to live in the communities they help make work. 75 communities saying yes to a future where Massachusetts is not only a great place to live, but a place where everyday people can afford to live again. And here's the thing. We're looking at another wave this fall because the vast majority of the communities that have brought their multifamily zoning changes to their town councils or town meetings have passed them. Now, 36 communities have crossed the finish line to have their plans approved by the Executive Office of Housing and Livable Communities. And that's a lot of work that goes into reviewing those zoning districts. And if I could have the team from HLC just raise their hand that have worked on looking at these plans, thank them. And I know 
Clark Ziegler and his team from Mass Housing Partnership, one of our quasis, who did tons of technical assistance with communities. If Clark and his team could just raise their hands and say thank you to them. These 36 communities know how important this is for their future. And they know it's not some other town's job to provide housing for the people who keep their communities running. Massachusetts has among the highest and fastest growing home prices and rents of any state in the nation. Even if you're fortunate enough to have your own home, this impacts you. If you've ever waited four or five hours in an emergency room, because the hospital is short-staffed, you've been impacted by the housing crisis. If your favorite restaurant closes early or is even shut down because they couldn't find help, then you've been impacted by the housing crisis. If your adult children are still living with you because they can't afford to get their own place, <laughs> like you did at their age, you've been impacted by the housing crisis. But here's some good news. Due to the work of these communities, that they're doing day in and day out, we now have 1,600 units of new housing in the pipeline in these newly approved zones. That's homes for thousands of people. Just last week, a WBUR Commonwealth Beacon poll indicated that a majority of residents support the MBTA Communities Law. And we can see that because half of the communities that need to act before the end of this year have already adopted their zoning intended to comply with the law. And I want to take a moment to congratulate each of these communities who have invested time and resources to develop and design these districts. And congratulations again to Arlington, Lexington, and Salem who acted swiftly and were the first three to be approved. Collectively, these communities went above and beyond the minimum requirements of the law. They nearly doubled the required capacity in their zoning. And now these communities, that is an applause line, uh, <laughs> and now these communities are eligible to tap into our newest grant program, the one the governor just talked about, the MBTA Communities Catalyst Fund. These funds support improvements to infrastructure, such as water, sewer, sidewalks, roads, or other systems to increase safety, mobility, and access. We've heard through many of the debates in local communities that people are worried about, hey, do we have the infrastructure necessary to build this housing? The governor, lieutenant governor, listened to that and created this new program that these compliant communities will have exclusive access to this program to meet the infrastructure needs for housing production in their new MBTA community zones. This is an important new tool in the toolbox to get housing actually built. Earlier this month, Arlington greenlit a new four-unit multifamily development. Lexington, which already adopted zoning back in May 2023, is ahead of the curve. They've already approved a 30-unit development on a bus line with four affordable units, and there are 600 more units in review right now. Right here in Somerville, the city took a unique strategy to upzoning to allow three units on every lot. This innovative approach has already yielded more than 20 applications for new construction. We are chipping away at the housing crisis already and creating homes for teachers and first responders uh, and folks who work uh, in service-related jobs. And we are doing it without sacrificing the character that ma makes Massachusetts a great place to call home. Lastly, I have a very simple message to all of the communities that are taking action this fall. The Executive Office of Housing and Livable Communities, the Healy Driscoll Administration, is here as your partner. We are here to help. We've already provided $7 million in technical assistance to 156 communities as they, as they develop their zones. And we look forward to continue, continuing to work with every community. Together, we will ensure Massachusetts remains a competitive state everyone can call home. And it's with that, it gives me great uh, honor to introduce our wonderful Attorney General who has been working so closely with our office and is so committed to the implementation of this law, Attorney General Campbell. Thank you.
Thank you, Secretary Augustus and your fabulous team. And I, I would love for us to take a moment to give the Secretary a huge round of applause. He works incredibly hard. He is extremely passionate about this issue, but rolls up his sleeves to get it done. And good afternoon, everyone. I don't know about you, I am absolutely delighted to be here because this truly is a celebration. And as many of you know, next week my office will be in court to enforce this critical law. However, today is meant for celebration and recognition of the incredible momentum behind the MBTA Communities Law. Look around if you haven't. There is a strong and diverse and expansive coalition of support. And yes, just last night, the town of Southborough passed multifamily zoning and should also be applauded. They bring our coalition to 75 municipalities acting in good faith to follow the law. Of the communities that have voted to date, 85% have supported compliance and an overwhelming majority, including the 36 fully compliant communities here today. And yesterday, my office announced 70 organizations, yes, 70, representing former AGs, unions, business leaders, housing advocates from all across the Commonwealth, who filed friend of the court briefs supporting our efforts to enforce this law. I'm grateful to each and every one of them. And it is now starting to pour rain. <laughs> so we're gonna hurry this along. But all of these communities and organizations recognize that this law, like any other law in the books, is mandatory. They embrace this law as a tool that it is to alleviate the housing affordability crisis impacting every corner of the Commonwealth. And why is that so important? Because all of us here know that housing affordability is the number one challenge facing the Commonwealth. The median price of a single family home in this region is almost $1 million. Those prices are simply out of reach. I'm gonna continue. <laughs> Cause it's just rain. There's a crisis. Those prices are simply out of reach for the far too many residents who lack of course affordable housing. The affordable housing is, crisis is forcing people to leave our great state. It's making it harder for teachers, nurses, first responders, public servants to live and work in their communities. Harder for younger families to stay in the communities they love. Harder for elders on fixed incomes to live close to their loved ones and to have basic amenities. And if we can't house our workforce, we cannot grow an economy in Massachusetts and we all will suffer the consequences as a result. The housing crisis is a statewide issue that needs a statewide response. And the, 70, and the 75 communities working to embrace new zoning get that, full stop. It is also why my office is using every single tool in our toolkit, and there are a lot of tools to address this challenge. Our municipal, our municipal law unit is directly engaged with these MBTA communities laws. They're on the phones every day providing technical assistance and guidance to these cities and towns and reviewing all zoning bylaws for legal compliance. Our civil rights and consumer protection divisions ensure that the rights of tenants and homeowners are protected, equally important. Our neighborhood renewal division uses the power of receivership to literally bring new affordable housing units into existence. And I recently created a housing affordability unit to think outside the box and identify creative solutions on this multifaceted issue. And when needed, you know, we aren't afraid to enforce the law when it is not being followed. The MBTA Communities Act is a powerful tool that absolutely will address this housing crisis. We all know it, we have the, the data and the numbers. And as we enter fall town meeting season, it is my hope that the communities that are still left out there to vote on these critical issues will join this diverse coalition. And as each of these communities step up to do their part, so will we. In March last year, I was also proud that we put out an advisory to make it crystal clear to communities that this law is mandatory and what it requires. But we took it a step further. We provided resources online to describe in plain language what the law means and how to come into compliance. We make referrals, of course, for technical assistance. We work with communities to help craft these zoning plans before they have a vote, not after. And today, the launch of this Catalyst Fund is another important step to support compliant communities with financial incentives. So 
I want to be crystal clear. We'd much rather work with the community than sue them. We always prefer collaboration. But when a choice is made to break the law, we have an obligation, and my office in particular will not be afraid to respond by meeting our obligation to enforce it. I am proud to stand here today with everyone who is here doing their part, and we don't take that lightly. They're not extended the gratitude they deserve. I want to thank the governor for her passion on this issue and your leadership. I also want to thank the lieutenant governor, along with the secretary and his fabulous team, I'm glad they got to raise their hands, who are working closely with my fabulous team that is over here, Esme, Margaret, and everybody else, but working hard in collaboration. Because we understand that to get this job done and to tackle this number one issue that people raise to us every single day, we cannot do it by ourselves. So I hope more will join this collective, even in the rain. <laughs> and at this point, and y'all all still look fabulous. And at this point, I also want to introduce my dear friend who's been a friend for a long time and the incredible mayor of Somerville, Somerville Mayor Tatiana Valentine. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Attorney General. Thank you, Attorney General. Good afternoon, everyone. And in behalf of our entire city, Welcome to Somerville. This is a city that we've long recognized the importance of multifamily housing. Why? Because we know there's a housing crisis. Massachusetts has done an amazing job and work at creating new jobs, but now we are in desperate need of housing to support our population. To put in perspective, it's estimated by 2030, we face a housing shortage of 200,000 housing units. That's 200,000 housing units, households, who will need to look outside our communities just for a roof over their heads. In order to be competitive, local, state, and federal governments need to do our part to encourage new affordable housing and multifamily housing. Multifamily housing offers affordability, increased efficiency, multi-generational housing options. For a city like ours, where space is limited and density is a part of our fabric, multifamily housing is one of the best tools we have to meet residents' needs and help ensure housing remains available and accessible. Now, not to toot our own horn, but... That's why it made sense for the city of Somerville to be among the first communities to fully comply with the MBTA Communities Act. And this... <laughs> and this past November, as it was mentioned by the secretary, we amended the rules around three family homes. We asked ourselves, what else can we do? So by allowing this type of housing to now be built as of right within the need, without the need for special permits in our residential districts where we already have one, two, three family housing units. And just to give a, a concept, that's about 75% of our land use are in the residential uh, one and two family uh, housing, houses are on there. So our, our strategy recognized that one size fits all approach doesn't work for every community. But by customizing our plan, we've been able to create more housing opportunities while maintaining the character of our neighborhoods. We didn't just make the change on paper. We worked with the community. We engaged them to ensure that this shift was understood and embraced. This process involved listening to feedback, ensuring transparency, and building a shared vision for how multifamily housing can benefit us all. And we are already seeing the results. In less than a year, Somerville has received 12 applications for new construction of three unit homes, compared to uh, fewer years, uh, you know, just a year ago and more, uh, this is before our zoning, we would only have one. Uh, and we've also seen an increase in application to convert one and two families into three unit homes. 
Developers are responding, and we're seeing that the MBTA Communities Act can encourage not just large apartment complexes like you see here, but smaller scale developments as you see on the hills behind you that fit into our neighborhoods. But while policy changes are a critical first step, state funding like the new grant program announced today by Governor Healy is essential to making these plans a reality. Creating more affordable housing helps residences, businesses, our region to continue to grow and flourish. It serves a unanimous good. This program will allow communities like Somerville to keep building on our progress. I hope our success will also inspire other communities looking for a way forward. And I want to close first and foremost, yes, I want my community development staff and my planning and zoning staff, please raise your hand. You're all back there. Awesome. Shout out to Dan Bartman for writing it all down. Uh, <laughs> Who did, uh, they did the hard work to find the thoughtful solutions that fit both the Communities Act and our community. And thank you, of course, to Governor Healy, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, Attorney General Campbell, Secretary Augustus, for your continued partnership for understanding the urgency of this moment. Together, we are moving Massachusetts forward by creating more housing options for all. I'd now like to introduce Greg Karcheski, president of Union Square Station Associates. Thank you, Mayor Ballantyne. Um, on behalf of the entire development team focused on the Union Square Revitalization Project, I want to welcome you here to Union Square in Somerville, adjacent to the new Green Line stop and next to housing to celebrate uh, this great MBTA community's policy. I'm grateful to be here to, with you today. What you see is the product of an incredible public and private partnership between US2, our organization, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, the city of Somerville, and countless community members who have shaped and supported the vision for this neighborhood over many, many years. I'd like to sincerely thank uh, the governor, the lieutenant governor and the Commonwealth, as well as the city of Somerville and Mayor Ballantyne for their invaluable partnership. From making the Green Line extension a reality to supporting infrastructure through MassWorks grants and collaborating on extensive planning and permitting, this has really been a team effort. And together, we've transformed what was once an underutilized scrapyard where we're standing right now today into a thriving transit hub, now surrounded by new housing, workspaces, and vibrant public spaces that benefit everyone. It's a great example of what's possible for transit-oriented development and what's envisioned as part of the MBTA Communities Act. And this is just the beginning. This is the first phase of the Union Square Revitalization Project, a Commonwealth-approved urban renewal initiative, which will ultimately bring over three million square feet of mixed-use transit-oriented development to this neighborhood, um, including new housing, new commercial spaces, and over four acres of new public spaces around the new T-stop. Our goal is to fulfill community, a community-led vision to transform this historic neighborhood into a key destination in the Boston, Cambridge, and Somerville innovation economy, while expanding its vibrant foundation of housing and residential development. At the heart of this first phase is housing. It's housing that's truly for everyone. With Prospect Union Square, we've added 450 new units. Um, it includes 90 affordable units. It, it marks the largest inclusionary housing effort in Somerville's history, and that's something we're really, really proud of. <laughs> These homes strengthen the neighborhood by providing, providing housing options for a range of individuals and families, helping them to establish roots in the community 
and ensuring Union Square remains a place where everyone belongs. We're positioned right next to the new Union Square MBTA station, and it's in a neighborhood that's in investing in multi multimodal transportation. And as a result, these units offer unparalleled, unparalleled opportunities. The Green Line train, which is just behind us, offers a one-seat ride in 10 minutes to North Station in the entire MBTA network, making travel for work, school, and beyond easy and accessible while opening doors to economic mobility. This is the, just the beginning of what we're building here. We're not only developing property, but we're expanding community. To everyone that has supported this project, thank you. Thank you for believing in this vision and for working with us to help make Union Square a vibrant, inclusive, and connected neighborhood for years to come. We look forward to continuing this journey together. Thank you. I'd now like to introduce Jesse Kansen Beninov, Executive Director of Massachusetts, uh, Abundant Housing Massachusetts. Excuse me, Jesse. My name is Jesse Kansen Beninov. I'm the Executive Director of Abundant Housing Massachusetts. We're a statewide coalition of everyday advocates uh, across the state who are saying yes in my backyard to more homes uh, in communities across our Commonwealth. I just want to take a moment uh, to say thank you to our state leadership team. You know, I have the opportunity to uh, be in collaboration with other pro-housing advocates in states and cities around the country. When I talk to them about the leadership from, from Governor Healy, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, Secretary Augustus, uh, and Attorney General Campbell to push uh, on pro-housing policies to address our housing shortage and crisis here in Massachusetts, they are blown away by the partnership that we have uh, on Beacon Hill. So thank you. <laughs> At Abundant Housing Massachusetts, we recognize the importance of local organizing to build a grassroots base of pro-housing advocates across the state to fight for more affordable homes and inclusive communities including compliance with the MBTA Communities Act. In the last two years since we've been implementing this law, Abundant Housing has worked with residents in dozens and dozens of communities across the MBTA region to educate their neighbors about the importance of this law uh, and their community playing a role in meeting our state's growing housing challenges. Through our work, we've learned that so many communities are poised to embrace this common sense reform and participate in local decision-making about how to increase housing choice and affordability under the MBTA Communities Act. We know this to be true because most, as we've heard already, most MBTA communities have demonstrated their willingness to comply with this law. Recent polling has shown that the majority of Massachusetts residents recognize the need for us to build more homes across the state and specifically to support implementation of the MBTA Communities Act. But polling is only a glimpse and our work on the ground with community members across the region is demonstrating this on a daily basis as our advocates fight for and win the passage of local pro-housing bylaws. And through our grassroots organizing efforts, we have catalyzed a proliferation of grassroots pro-housing groups across the MBTA region, in cities and towns, just to name a few like Arlington, Brookline, Braintree, Franklin, Gloucester, Ipswich, Needham, Norwood, Watertown, Worcester, and many more. And we have seen... <laughs> and in doing that, we have seen leadership emerge from everyday residents coming from all walks of life. This includes advocates like Ruth, an 87-year-old resident of Marblehead who wants to downsize in her community, but she can't because of the housing shortage there. She has joined the local pro-housing advocacy group in hopes that she can advocate for more housing for seniors like herself and help ensure that her town complies with this important law. And then there's James, a current college student in DC, a native of Southborough, who traveled this, just uh, this past Monday uh, back to Southborough simply to witness and vote in town meeting uh, the victory uh, where they achieved a 20, 281 to 273 vote margin that would not have been possible 
were it not for, through the grassroots organizing and mobilization of their group Southboro for All. James is helping to ensure that his town remains a place that he can move back to after college. Along with the work of our partners from many organizations, One Commonwealth, CHAPA, MHP, and others, we will continue to build a broad, multi-generational, and diverse movement that is not only fighting to ensure that the vast majority, that all MBTA communities do their part under this law to zone for more housing opportunities, but that these coalitions will continue past the MBTA community's implementation phase with advocates that are prepared to make the case for future pro-housing reforms at the state and local levels. Together, we can make this vision of an inclusive, sustainable, and economically competitive and affordable Massachusetts a reality. Thank you very much. I have the privilege now of handing it back to uh, Governor Healy. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you so much, Jesse, and also joining us today, uh, Mayor Di Maria from Everett. Thank you. Thank you to all of our municipal leaders for being out, and town managers and uh, town administrators and others. Um, thank you. So we're happy to take questions on topic. Great. Great. Sounds good. Have a great afternoon. The sun came out. <laughs>